Hey everybody, welcome to another video review. Um, so tonight I'd like to talk about another book here from the Ace Game Book series by Jonathan Green, Beowulf Beast Slayer. So this is the uh, cover of the book. This is paperback, as you can see. And this is book four of the Ace Book series. Alice in Nightma uh, Alice's Nightmare in Wonderland being book one, followed by The Wicked Wizard of Oz, Neverland, Here Be Monsters, and then this is book four. Book five is Twas, The Krampus Night Before Christmas, which I actually haven't read yet. I'm uh, just starting uh, on that. It takes me a while to read these books. I think my uh, somewhat like obsessive compulsive personality works against me. So for choose your own adventure books or these game books where you only have one uh, good path through the book, I tend to get sort of obsessed with trying to find all the different paths. And so when you read it, and I tend not to read it like super seriously. Again, if you were to do it super seriously, you would have like, you know, pencil, you have the adventure sheets printed out from the website. You'd have the dice ready or, or whatever, you know, whether it's the dice or the playing cards. Um, you'd have a blank piece of paper, you'd be mapping, taking, I mean, it would be the whole shebang. And I, I don't really have the time to do that or it's hard for me to dedicate the energy to do that. Um, it takes a bit for me to get that involved. And so for reading these, at least, um, I enjoy the journey of discovery um, and playing the book more than actually, you know, finding the battle and that type of thing. And so I tend to read it in bed. And so the thing is, when I'm reading it in bed, it gets kind of uh, funky because every time I go to a, a, a branch of the paths, uh, I feel compelled to read every single branch. Like, okay, I got, even though I know, for instance, um, you know, having read a lot of these, I have a pretty good idea where or what path I'm supposed to go, right? I mean, we don't have to be a genius exactly to figure that out. Um, a lot of it is just kind of common sense. Still, the curiosity in me means I want to find out what happens if I go the other way. And um, of course, there are certain points in the book where they will branch you with no hint of what's the right path. They just go, you know, do you want to go north, you know, north or west or east, or do you want to go right or left in a, you know, in a dungeon or something like that. And then you have to kind of just, you know, kind of flip a coin or just take a wild guess and just go. And so I tend to, you know, use the finger cheat where I put my finger here and I'm flipping and I use another finger and put a certain amount of fingers. And so when I read these books, <clears throat> it does take me a really long time to get through to them, to get through them because um, I, I want to find out exactly what happens. Now, luckily in the modern age, I have my cell phone with me. And so rather than, you know, having to jot down all these different things, I can just use my uh, cell phone to take a picture of the section. Uh, and then I'll go back to it if I have to, uh, if there's like a cryptic hint or like a code word or something or a clue and we, where you would normally have to write it uh, on, a, on your adventure sheet with a pencil, I can just uh, snap a shot with my phone. Um, you just have to keep track of, of the photos, of course. Um, but that's kind of a nice little workaround and allows me again to play these games uh, in bed. So it takes a while to do. It takes a lot of you know, energy to kind of go through it and uh, figure out all the different paths. So I haven't done the fifth book yet, but I did go through the fourth book, which is what we're here to talk about. So uh, Beowulf, Beast Slayer, and uh, the, the, the internal art is illustrated by a guy named Russ uh, Nicholson. So I haven't personally um, heard of Russ Nicholson. I'm not a big, um, obviously, you know, I, I don't follow these very much. Um, but going to the acknowledgements, um, Jonathan Green does give credit. As you, I learned a little bit about Russ Nicholson. Apparently, uh, he uh, is actually the person who illustrated the very first fighting fantasy game book, The Warlock of Firetop Mountain, which uh, I did not know. So that's, you know, th that's something uh, nice to know. Um, as part of the book, he also worked with a few people to help him with like the dialogue and um, I guess the mythology of Beowulf. Uh, so Professor Dr. Oliver uh, M. Traxel, uh, Professor of English Language and Linguistics at the University of Stavanger for Old English Translations, and then uh, Dr. Janina Ramirez, Course Director for the Undergraduate Certificate and Diploma in the History of Art at the University of Oxford for her insights into the character of Beowulf and the cultural setting of the story. So 
this also sort of sets the stage for what makes this game book unique. Uh, number one, it does not have multiple, multiple characters, uh, whereas you know, both uh, Wicked Wizard of Oz and Neverland had a plethora of characters. Uh, Wizard of, Wicked Wizard of Oz had six viewpoints that you could play through, and of course Neverland had uh, four main ones, and the Easter Egg uh, Crocodile as the fifth one. Uh, Beowulf Beast Slayer essentially just has one. You play as the role of Beowulf. Um, now, you can also play as Grendel, by the way, and there's no, um, there's no effort made to hide that. Um, you know, Grendel starts at the very end of the uh, book. Literally the very next page after the end of the book, it'll say Grendel Grimslayer right here, and then you can just start playing as Grendel. But that's a very uh, small adventure. It obviously ends when Grendel, um, from his viewpoint, defeats Beowulf. And so it's not a very complicated thing, okay? Uh, definitely the, the definition of an Easter egg. So you play as a uh, Beowulf, um, and in that context, I think the book, to some extent, is helped by it because the entire 500 section book is devoted to just Beowulf's adventures. And so uh, Jonathan Green has, I think, a greater or a wider uh, canvas to create a more complicated adventure. So um, my review, I guess I'll just start with sort of the story. So the story essentially follows the saga of Beowulf, and there you know you can see that he did do his homework, um, consulting with you know professors who actually uh, have studied this to give it that authenticity, and so you kind of follow in game book format Beowulf's um, adventures, some of the legends surrounding Beowulf, and of course the highlights were you know defeating Grendel, then Grendel's mother, uh, defeating the dragon at the very uh, end. Um, you get to play through uh, a lot of those. So that's really uh, neat. Um, so I don't think it, this is a situation with a, say, Jonathan Green created the story. Um, a lot of it, you know, he, it was is basically based in, in history, in mythology, and then he um, converted it to something that's more palatable and that makes more sense for a game book. Um, but it does, you know, pick your interest. It's something that where after um, I read it, um, I began to look at some of the online resources about Beowulf. Maybe at a later time, I may even uh, invest the time to actually read the original uh, saga. It's not the most accessible you know, thing in the world because again, um, this is from the Nordic culture and I think it's like an epic poem. So it's not you know, exactly like a story or something like that's easily read. Um, but at least you know, I looked it up in Wikipedia, I kind of read a little bit about the summary and, and at a later point, I may invest some time delving more deeply into it. So that's a pretty big compliment that the game book um, was good enough and was intriguing enough to make me want to learn more about the source material. Uh, so that's the, basically the story. Um, he writes it in a very interesting way. Um, so his dialogue is written in sort of this cadence, especially when Beowulf is you know, exchanging dialogue with the king, with Hrothgar and uh, all of that. Uh, he, he writes with the sort of, um, like with the authenticity, again, of the, how you would expect the poem to go, or how you expect um, sort of you know, them to talk in that context. And so it, um, it definitely, you know, again, gives that the authenticity. So it doesn't, if it, like, it's almost like Jonathan put on like another voice to write this, you know, and he used his research and his collaboration to um, give it, again, that air of authenticity. So I really enjoyed that. I'll give you an example from one of the texts. So for instance, um, you go in here and uh, you're talking to King Rothgar, and he says, so tell us, Beowulf said, says King Rothgar, what brings you across the whale road to our shores? And so the whale road, of course, is the sea. It's never explicitly mentioned. Um, the book does have an appendix at the very back that actually uh, teaches you how to pronounce uh, some of these Anglo-Saxon names. Uh, how to pronounce a Beowulf or you know Breakar, um, Etch the Owl, and that type of thing. You know, um, Gayat, uh, Grendel, Hanshio, and all these things. And there's actually a, a, a runes a thing that's used in, throughout the book. So if you are inclined, you know you can actually translate the runes in the body of the adventure, uh, and you translate it into regular English. And then sometimes you have to convert the English into a, n a number to solve various puzzles. So there is an appendix, but there's, it's not like overly done. He doesn't tell you like, for instance, what whale road is. You have to sort of either do your own homework, you have to get from the context that the whale road is the sea that they you know, sail across. 
So again, uh, that's an example of the sort of language that's sprinkled throughout. And then when Beowulf talks, again, it's very um, sort of like, you know, the old Anglo-Saxon way of speaking. He'll say like, I've come to serve you, noble lord, you begin, for the scalds sing of King Hrothgar's curse, from the ice-locked north to the rain-lashed south, and from the lands of the Frisians in the west to the untamed forests of the Rus to the east. And so again, this is the book, you know, you're reading this and it really helps to get you into the, the mindset of Beowulf and uh, you know, sort of draws you into the story, into the, the setting. So that was fantastic. Uh, the voice that he used in this book is so unique to, um, you know, sort of Beowulf uh, and the, the, the mythology of Beowulf. It's reads like completely differently from um, the voice of Neverland or of the Wicked Wizard of Oz, for instance. So that was a very pleasant surprise. Um, so we talked about sort of the plot, we talked about the dialogue. In terms of the gameplay mechanics, um, this is a, a much more difficult game book than uh, either Wicked Wizard or uh, Neverland. I, I found Neverland to be the easiest of them, but you know, Wicked Wizard wasn't exactly uh, mind-blowingly difficult as well. Um, but Beowulf, you know, this book actually it, it kind of harkens back to um, some of the older fighting fantasy styles where throughout the adventure, even from the very beginning, you know, you're tasked with paying attention and you're tasked with writing down um, certain key phrases. And if you miss that, even from the very beginning, it makes achieving the best ending uh, essentially impossible. And so I definitely respect that. There's multiple sections where you have to answer riddles. Um, if you want to, um, you know, for instance, find out the name of a certain sword, you want to get a bonus, it does ask you to translate from the ruins to, um, you know, the English word and then uh, turn the English word into a numerical number by adding the, the digits, for instance, and turning directly to that section. So I do enjoy that, you know. Um, it adds that layer of challenge and it's not insignificant. Uh, there are other sections near the end of the book where you may take on a companion and uh, and also you uh, 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 have the option of getting a, um, uh, is a superpower? It's not a really a superpower, but you have the option of getting an attribute and one of them is wisdom. And if you get that, um, again, you have to add or subtract various numbers to the sections you're on that's marked by a picture which gives you valuable information. So uh, I like that mix, you know, so definitely, uh, I wouldn't say that Beowulf Beast Slayer is one of the hardest game books, like say compared to uh, some of the worst fighting fantasies that Jonathan himself has written <laughs> over the years uh, when he was flexing his muscles as a game book designer. I wouldn't say that, but it definitely, uh, it definitely doesn't feel, it's definitely not cheap. It doesn't feel easy. Uh, I would put it up there, you know, with, a game book like say City of Thieves, you know, it's it's not far off from there. Maybe a little bit harder than City of Thieves. Maybe even on the level of a Death Trap dungeon, for instance. Maybe not quite as hard as Death Trap, but it's on that level. So it's not an embarrassment when it comes to difficulty. And I did enjoy that. I did enjoy having to pay attention, um, take notes, use my phone to snapshots, keeping things in the back of my head. Um, and you know, it was tough. I mean, some parts of it, you know, there's some pretty long uh, Anglo-Saxon names, some pretty long Nordic names. They have to translate and then do the math and convert the letters to numbers and add the numbers. So uh, I really, I really did, you know, like that. Um, so overall, I would put this book as a bit stronger than Neverland. Um, I still like Wicked Wizard of Oz, maybe, a, eh, it's, it's hard, maybe a little bit more. I, I still, I think I, I still enjoyed Wizard a little bit more, just kind of running the different characters, um, just because of the wide variety. Uh, you get to play so many different characters from the witch to the wizard to the core four on Dorothy's party. And of course his uh, steampunk um, twist on it and having Dorothy, um, you know, be, be actually have you know, witch powers, you know, because she killed the Wicked Witch of the East. Um, so I still enjoy that, but this is pretty amazing. Like I said, it, it really, you know, if Jonathan Green set out to have you play the, the saga of Beowulf in game book format, he succeeded wildly. And it's a very long adventure. I mean, you, there are distinct phases throughout, and it does a time jump as well. Uh, so just when you think that you're kind of done, because the most famous part of Beowulf that everybody sort of remembers uh, is, you know, the Grendel and Grendel's mother and all of that. But when you 
go through all of that and you think it's done, you're not done. You're, you're mainly a little bit over halfway through, um, maybe 60% along the way. There's still like a really good chunk uh, that you have to do at the end where you know, you're exploring a barrel and the barrels and you know, fighting uh, a dragon. Uh, so uh, it's a long adventure. It does a very good, I think, you know, comprehensive overview of, of Beowulf's life and his uh, various uh, challenges. And there's nice game mechanics where, um, say, Beowulf will come up and he'll recite a memory, or uh, one of the scalds will sing an epic song or recite an epic poem, and then you actually play the poem, you actually play the memory, and you go backwards in time, and then you make choices there. So th that was really, really neat as well. So a very, um, you know, kind of imaginative way of doing things. So I think this shows a lot of, I think, Jonathan Green's talents as a game book designer um, in Stark, you know, very Stark, relief, you know, a really, really good uh, illustration of, of all of that. So uh, this is still widely available. Um, as you get later on in the series, it gets easier, obviously, to obtain. So, you know, it's uh, uh, 10 pounds uh, UK and then about $15 US. Uh, and I definitely recommend uh, getting this. Uh, it's so far, every one of the Ace books has been really, really enjoyable. Uh, so I'm really looking forward to uh, reading Krampus and reviewing that. And then um, I actually managed to get, keep my fingers crossed, I actually managed to get uh, the Alice, the first Alice book from uh, Jonathan himself, um, you, you know, communicating to him, with him via a Kickstarter, Kickstarter uh, email. So that's on the way, but unfortunately it's on the way from the UK and that's bad news. I bought uh, two, <laughs> two books from uh, Home Guard Press, uh, the uh, publisher of the Lone Wolf Collector's Editions, about two books, and we're going to a month now, it's still not here. Uh, it's been held in customs and then from Virginia here, so it's been a, a sort of a disaster. And I'm hoping that um, the books that you know, Jonathan sent is gonna get here a little bit shorter time frame than one month. But I'm looking forward again to reading uh, Alice's Nightmare in Wonderland. So, so far all of these books have been uh, quite enjoyable. I, when I read these, I look for uh, of course, enjoyment. I also look for the um, the challenge of the gameplay, and it's been a pretty nice mixture so far. Um, by the way, in terms of the the internal illustrations, uh, I won't lie. I mean, it's great that this guy illustrated the first um, Final Fantasy game book, the, the Warlock of Hardtop Mountain. And now that I see it, I can definitely appreciate the similarity. But I never thought that the artwork for the Warlock of Firetop Mountain was all that. I mean, it was nice, you know, um, interesting. Uh, it, it wasn't bad by any stretch. It was quite good. But I, I think I still love uh, Kev Crossley's illustrations uh, more from the first two books that I've read. Uh, and I'm looking forward to seeing his work, for, of course, for Alice's Nightmare. Uh, I like that artwork a little bit better. So overall, again, uh, you know, good artwork, well-told story, uh, very well-designed game book. Uh, 500 sections will definitely get your money's worth. Uh, again, sometimes you're spoiled and you're, you're like, oh, 900 sections for Neverland, 850 sections for a wizard, and, and then 500 seems like a step down. But remember, this is 500 devoted essentially completely to, um, to Beowulf himself. And so uh, overall, that's a very long book. I mean, that, that's, that's a significantly challenging game book. I mean, for all of Fighting Fantasy, there's very, very few um, game books that approach 500 sections the entire run of Fighting Fantasy. Um, the Creature of Havoc, of course, was, was I think, a touch over 400 and was it 430, 430, about 440, four, you know, it, was, it wasn't close to 500, but it was over 400, and that at the time was considered a really big deal because all the Fighting Fantasies had only 400 sections. And then, of course, um, The Crown of Kings, which is the culmination of the four book cycle by Steve Jackson, it's like his magnum opus in a way. Um, I think that was 800 sections. It was pretty impressive. Um, but, you know, How the Werewolf was very long. But, you know, for a game book, 500 sections is, is very meaty indeed. So I definitely uh, didn't feel like, you know, um, for instance, I got robbed or anything like that. I definitely feel like I got my money's worth. So that's my review for Beowulf uh, Beast Slayer, a game book by Jonathan Green. Um, yeah, let me show it right here. So this is an example of the, again, the, the cover for it. Um, Definitely, when you have the chance, go grab it. These these books, this is not like Pride and Prejudice, you know, or Sherlock Holmes, which is in print indefinitely. Uh, there's definitely a lifespan for these books. As time passes, they're gonna go out of print. 
So uh, go ahead and get one. Um, you're gonna have a lot of fun reading it. So until next time, uh, when I talk about uh, Krampus, do take care.